You're going to see this problem twice at this moment and then later when we learn about binomial distributions. But for now, we're going to apply the probability rules we've learned so far to answer these questions. Reading the problem, the challenge will be to um, just uh, depict the problem as we've um, understood the probability rules to actually be able to apply them. Since the gene for albuminism in humans is recessive, carriers of this gene have a probability one-half of passing it to a child. And the child is albino only if both parents pass the gene. Parents pass their genes independently. You're told that both parents carry the gene. What is the probability that their first child is albino? So I'm going to set this up in a particular way. You might have done this differently. I'm going to say that the probability that the gene is passed, we'll just say is equal to one half, assuming that a parent is the carrier. So if we see this as a sequential events or um, like flipping the coin, think of it like that. We're going to do these sequentially, flip them one, one at a time, but we're going to lie them side by side. So then we're going to say we want to find the probability that a child is albino. This is equal to the probability that the first parent passes and the other parent passes. And so because of our rule of independence, we can simply translate and into multiplication. Remember, that's only because we're told that genes are passed independently. So the probability that the first child is albino will be one half times one half, which is 25% or a quarter. In the second problem, the sequential events are going to be the, the children being born. So the, we're going to look at two births. And um, you want to find the probability that both are albino. So we want albino child and albino child. And these events are independent because they're made up of passing genes that were also independent events. Okay, and you're told, if you had any doubt, that they inherit independently of each other. So what is the probability of being albino since these are independent, then again, we apply rule number five, the independence property, and just multiply. So from part A, we know we're multiplying one quarter times one quarter for a probability of one sixteenth. In the last problem, what's the probability that neither is albino? Well, what would that look like? According to our notation, probability neither is albino would look like this. This is a not albino, and the other one is also not albino. The answer is not 15 sixteenths, all right? That's not the way you're supposed to think about this. Let's see what the answer is. Well, if the probability of albi albinism is one, four, one fourth, then the probability of no albino child is going to be one minus that. So let's do that on the side. The probability of not being albino, oops, the probability of not being albino is going to be 1 minus the probability of being albino, which is 1 minus 1 fourth, or 3 fourths. And so, 
The answer is going to be because of independence. We multiply the probability of not being albino in the second one, not being albino. We multiply three quarters times three quarters and get nine sixteen, not like I said, fifteen sixteen. So why not? Why don't you get fifteen sixteenths? You will not get fifteen sixteenths because you're you're ignoring, if you do that, the other possible outcomes. Let's review what the outcomes are. You could have two albino children. You could have one albino children and the second one not albino. That's a knot. That's a knot on top. And the other possibility is you could have the first one not be albino, but the second one will be albino. And finally, neither of them albino. So there's these two other events that are possible that you would be ignoring if you subtracted 1 16th off of 1 to get 15 16. You've completely forgotten about these events. And what's the probability of those events? Well, if this one's 1 16th and this one's 9 16th, that takes up 10 16th. So all you have left is 6 16th, and each of these have to be identical probabilities, so each of them will be 3 16th. To prove that to yourself, do the math. Probability of A and not A, this would be the same as probability of not A and A, correct? Of course. There's no difference because I'm going to multiply and multiplying um, would be the same either way. So this is because of independence. Okay, so what is the probability of A and not A? I'm going to just multiply those together. The probability of A is one-fourth. The probability of not A is three-fourths. And that's why we get three-sixteenths. Okay, so if I was to turn these all into probabilities, the probability of A, the probability of A and not A, the probability of not A and A, and the probability of not A and not A, this one we figured out is one quarter. This one is one sixteen, sorry. This one is nine sixteen. And each of these are going to be three sixteen for a total of one.